Hello there. Today I wanted to film sort of a chatty tag video and I recently came across Dakota Warren's version of the Bookaholics Anonymous tag. I will link her video down in the description and I will also link who I believe to be the original creator. I uh, did a little digging and I think it originated from a blog post from someone called ZZ. So leave that linked down in the deeply do as well. If you're new here, hi, my name is Lillian. I love talking about books, creative process, writing, and if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you come back for more. But without further ado, let's get on into this tag, uh, mainly because I should be leaving the house to grab the bus to go to work, but instead I'm filming this video, so I need to be quick about this. As a self-proclaimed bookaholic, I felt like this tag was an apt one to do. The first question is, what do you like about buying new books? And the answer that immediately comes to mind for me is the excitement over the premise that I will soon get to read that book. It is definitely a dopamine hit uh, when I purchase a book, which I'd imagine a lot of people have a similar feeling when they buy a new to them book. I think part of that dopamine hit for me also comes from the feel of the physical book in my hands. I love books as objects. I love the sensory aspect of them. And for me, I love paperbacks, hence the uh, the channel name, Paperback Stacks. But I also am a big fan of a slim hardcover book. I find those lovely to hold and to read. The next question is, how often do you buy new books? And to this one I'll say, I find myself buying books in spurts, and I will also give the caveat that I don't always buy new new books. I will shop secondhand books, I will shop online for used books, so new to me books. But I often find myself going long-ish periods of not buying any books, say a couple of months, and then I will have sort of this pile up of book buying spurts that sort of happen one after the other, or it might coalesce into one big book buying spree. I've had several spats of book buying recently, so stay tuned for yet another book haul in the coming weeks here. The next question is bookstore or online book shopping, which do you prefer? And for me, I really actually enjoy both when it comes to finding books that I want to read. Online shopping I found has made it a lot easier to find specific books that I'm looking for, as well as having the online algorithms recommend me books based on what I have been browsing, what I have been purchasing, which can be dangerous in that it causes me to buy more books, but also at the same time that isn't necessarily an issue for me um, as a bookaholic. But as far as atmosphere and browsing experience, you really can't beat an actual physical bookstore. I also really enjoy getting to see the physical copy of something uh, in my hands that I'm getting ready to purchase. The thing I found with online book shopping, which I have done a bit of recently, one of the few downsides has been on the rare occasion that I've ordered a book and it has come without a dust jacket, it has, uh, it's a completely different edition than the one I expected, or it is heavily annotated uh, by someone else and uh, unbeknownst to me. So that has sort of been uh, not an often thing that has occurred, but it's been something that's popped up a couple of times uh, that I think can be a downside for me when it comes to online shopping. Apologies for the light going in and out here. I'm filming with natural daylight, which can be unreliable. Bookstores can definitely give you the assurance as to what you're actually going to end up with, and there's also the benefit of getting to immediately leave the bookstore after purchasing and have the book physically in hand as opposed to having to wait for it to ship and arrive to you. For me in bookstores as well, I have to factor in the level of curation in a bookstore. How well is the bookstore curated? Um, if I happen to be looking for something older, possibly out of print, or a topic that's a little bit more niche, I find that I struggle to find those in actual bookstores, so I kind of revert to shopping online for that. And then finally, I think I found that it is a bit easier for me to get carried away when shopping for books online. Because there is that lack of physical interaction, I might have a really reasonable total cost on my cart, uh, say if I'm shopping for used books, but I might also lack the knowledge of how much space those books are actually going to take up when they arrive to me, which, as you can see, <laughs> uh, you might be able to see. Spaces become 
a little bit more of an issue again for me recently. So there's that. The next question is, do you have a favorite bookstore? And there are a couple I'm going to list in places that I have lived or places that I tend to visit. Uh, so starting off, I used to live in Burlington, Vermont, and there are some lovely bookstores in Burlington, Vermont, if you are in the area looking for a bookstore. My favorites were definitely Crow Books on Church Street. They have a lovely curation, new and used books as well. Uh, Speaking Volumes is a wonderful large used bookstore on Pine Street. Pine Street. And then Phoenix Books, I don't remember what street they were on. I remember them having a nice curation, but they also have a really cool bargain basement. At the moment, I currently live in Maryland, so I have several Maryland bookstore recommendations. If you're in Baltimore, I would highly recommend checking out Greedy Reads and Red Emma's Bookstore. Red Emma's has been a longtime favorite of mine since college. They are a wonderful socialist, communist, uh, anarchist bookstore. They are a worker-owned establishment as well, and I believe, I haven't been back for several years, but I believe they have moved and established a full restaurant and bar area as well, so highly recommend checking them out. They also have a lot of really cool events and speakers that come in. If you're in the Tacoma Park area of Maryland, I would definitely recommend checking out People's Books. They, again, have some really cool speakers and events that they do, but I really love their curation. If you're looking for bookstores in DC on your next visit, I would definitely recommend checking out Lost City Books in Adams Morgan which is also right near one of my favorite ramen places, uh, Saku Ramen. There is also Kramer's Bookstore in DuPont Circle, which is uh, within walking distance of where I work, which is quite dangerous for me. They also have a lovely cafe restaurant attached to the bookstore. Of course, there is Politics and Prose, which has a couple of locations uh, across DC. My favorite is definitely the one that's in the Friendship Heights neighborhood on Connecticut Avenue. They have a lovely downstairs cafe uh, restaurant type place, but I really love the curation in that particular politics and prose. And then finally, I do have to mention the Potter's House, which is in the Columbia Heights neighborhood. I actually visited this cafe bookstore for the first time in, I believe it was my cozy winter reading vlog. I will link that up in the cards if you'd like to see the interior of that. They have a really lovely pay it forward system where you can pay it forward when it comes to the next person coming in in need of a meal, in need of some coffee. And then of course I would be reticent if I did not mention the wonderful Shakespeare and Company in Paris. It is just an incredibly magical space, uh, the way that it's curated, the way that it is set up, but also just the history of it. It's long tradition of fostering writers, so that is one of my favorite places in the world. I think about it quite often, and I will actually be visiting it quite soon. Stay tuned for that. The next question is, do you pre-order books? And my answer is yes. Not very often, but if it is a favorite author of mine, say for example Tamsin Muir and the Locked Tomb series, which I am chomping at the bit to get the fourth installment of that series, as I feel a lot of the fans are. But whenever that fourth book does get announced, uh, you better believe I will be pre-ordering it as soon as I can. Also, if I come across a book that I just find that I'm quite interested in, if it's a niche uh, interest that I have, for example, recently I pre-ordered uh, and received The Missing of the Psalm by Guff. Dire, <laughs> which is a meditation on a remembrance of the First World War. This will also be featured in said upcoming book haul. Stay tuned for more on this. Usually I would say I probably pre-order one at most, maybe two, maybe two books per year. It's something that I really enjoy doing, uh, supporting authors that I love, or just being really excited about a book getting released and then somewhat forgetting about it and then one day it turns up on your doorstep and it's just a nice little treat for future me. Our next question is, do you have a book buying limit? And no, not at the moment, but I think I might need to, uh, want to, uh, start implementing something along those lines to help curtail my, uh, recent, uh, voracious book buying habit. I love getting excited about books and acquiring them, but A, at the moment I have 
several hundred unread books on my shelves that I'm still very excited to get to, but just find myself also just being excited about books that I see out in the wild. So I'm thinking of implementing some sort of monthly book buying limit of limiting myself to maybe two books per month and that way I'm not cutting myself off completely. I think it'll help me be a lot more conscientious about how many books I'm buying but also what books I'm deciding to immediately bring into my collection and which ones I might still be excited for but I feel like I can put off buying until later on. Book buying bans, are they something for you? I did a book buying ban last year and I found it went actually surprisingly well. I think for me it was nice having the quote-unquote choice taken from me. The mental back and forth of book buying of should I, shouldn't I, how many should I get, should I really buy this many? The automatic answer when I spotted a book that I was interested in was just no. The one sort of caveat would be okay if you're interested in this book write down the title, take a picture, and see if the library carries it. So if I'm really, really chomping at the bit, um, I still have access to that book if I would like it. I found it to be kind of really a nice way to step back and have a reset uh, mentally of what books, how many books I was bringing into my collection. And I'm finding that this year, the the year following this book buying ban that I did, that I'm probably buying less books than I have, say, in the past per year. But I'm still buying quite a lot of books and on the one hand bookaholic me loves this on the other hand me who is conscientious of how many <laughs> shelves that I currently have and how much space on those shelves but also just the part of me that is trying to be more mindful and present with what I currently have and keep coming back to the books that I have already purchased that I am very excited for, still am excited for. That's why I bought them in the first place. The next question is, how big is your wish list? And if my story graph to read list has anything to say about that, it's over a thousand books and counting. Will I likely be able to read all of them before I die, plus all of the ones that will come out in the years leading up to that? No, but a girl can dream, right? Um, <laughs> it's nice to daydream and well the truth of the matter being I will not be able to read all of the books on my wish list in my lifetime. Uh, I still have a lot of fun getting excited about books that interest me. The next question is which three books from your wish list do you wish you owned now? And starting off I definitely was thinking about uh, Berlin Alexanderplatz by Alfred Doblin. Apologies if I mispronounced his name. This is a continuation of my Weimar Germany period literature bent. This is a book that I've heard as being considered as one of the masterpieces of literature that came out of that period. It is set in the interwar period in Germany between the First and the Second World War and it just sounds really wonderful and it sounds like a very interesting snapshot into that period of history that I've really been intrigued by recently. Next I would definitely love to own uh, The Cancer Journals by Audre Lorde. Audre Lorde is one of my favorite writers, poets, activists, and she kept a series of journals during her cancer treatment which she unfortunately passed from uh, way too young, but I would love to get a hold of her published journals. I really enjoy reading the journals of creatives, of writers, just to sort of see a little bit behind the curtain, but also get some insight into their own creative process and how they sort of translate ideas and thoughts onto the page. And then the final book on my wish list that I currently really have my eye on is The Empathy Exams Essays by Leslie Jameson. This is an essay collection written by a, I don't know if she's still doing this, but in her past she was a medical actor who was paid to act out symptoms for medical students to diagnose and the description says that it is a revealing essay collection that asks essential questions about our basic understanding of others. How should we care about each other? How can we feel one another's pain? especially when pain can be assumed, distorted, or performed? Is empathy a tool by which to test or even grade each other? By confronting pain, real and imagined, her own and others, Jameson uncovers a personal and cultural urgency to feel, which sounds just really up my alley at the moment. So those are the three that I would be really excited to get my hands on soon, although I think I need to lay off some book buying for a while. <laughs> and then finally, we have the question of who do I tag? I would really love to see Shelley Swearingen 
do this tag as well as M from Manuscripts in the Margins, Melinda at A Web of Stories, Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot, Kat from Cat's Field Notes, as well as anyone who would like to answer these questions in the comments. If you are someone that I tagged and you do not have time or desire to do this tag, don't worry about it, but I would really love to see uh, your responses to these questions. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this video and run out the door because I am uh, running a little bit late here, but um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already, um, and I would love to hear from you in the comments. But with that, I'm going to close out this video, say my goodbyes, and that I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.